All right, today we're going to be talking about the war machine. This is a concept that Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari use in A Thousand Plateaus, and it's often very strange to look at because it can be viewed rather metaphorically and also very literally. And they use this as a way to talk about politics. And the fundamental assumption that is being challenged is that the state is primary and that discontinuity or change or becoming is secondary. Instead, they want to advocate for a sort of vibrant materialism where change is fundamental and primary and is always warding off the establishment of forms. However, with certain maybe we could call them creative practices, the state is able to take hold of the war machine and use it for its own means via things like the military. So at baseline, the war machine is a force opposed to the state apparatus which acts as a fundamental vibrant matter undergirding all of reality. It is a force that drives change, or as Deleuze and Guattari call it, deterritorialization. And it does so in a nomadic style. And this means that the war machine is always kind of living on the edge. If we think about nomads... Nomads, of course, go from territory to territory, and as Deleuze and Guattari say, the nomad does have a territory. It would be false to think that the nomad is territoryless or homeless, so to speak, but rather it is always pushed out of these territories by the forces of the earth. It's pushed out by livestock being all used up because you've killed them, or by forest lines receding back, or by invading climates. And as such, territory is established out of necessity, at the edge of the steppes and the forest, at this boundary, not necessarily in a random spot in space, right? But the nomad is guided by these forces which establish boundaries upon which the nomad lives. And the nomad does this in an effort to tarry with things and really be moved by these subterranean forces of the earth. And this is a way of utilizing this vibrancy in the way in which reality operates, which Deleuze and Guattari think is often problematized and captured by the state as a way to institute control. Now, when talking about the war machine, we have to understand that this idea of a machine is not an entity. Think about when we talk about machines generally. There is no kind of form that all machines have in common, but rather it's a sort of family resemblance among machines that establishes what a machine is. And often this is done by the mode of function. Namely, they have an input and an output, and as such, they have this processing capacity which defines the machine. And thus, the war machine is not an entity, but it too is a mode or capacity of action, which is always imminent in every process, and it allows for the possibility of innovation, for example, weapons in the Mongols' case, or change in general, as the nomad, for example, moves through his territory. Deleuze and Guattari call this a universal tendency laden within all of the singularities and traits of expression which traverses technical and interior milieus that refract or differentiate it in accordance with the singularities and traits each of them retains, selects, draws together, causes to converge, invents. <laughs> 
So they're talking about this idea of a milieu, which is something like a compository state. There's a bunch of different entities which make up a milieu and define it by certain tendencies. And thus these tendencies interact with the various things within it to establish certain normal ways of being. And when these milieus interact with each other, they differentiate each other and cause change. And thus, conflict, just like in Nietzsche, is an important element of the war machine. That this conflict, and really this contact, is retained. And this contact is something that Deleuze and Guattari see as being warded off by the state. We can see this carried out in, for example, Foucault's analysis of madness, in the way in which madness is seen to have been cured in the modern age, whereas madness used to be rampant. And this is something that Nietzsche critiques in Thus Spoke Zarathustra as a sign of the last man, which is to say this ending of the creative possibilities of mankind because we've sectioned off that which allows for contact and change. An important part that establishes the way in which the war machine functions is that it is non-teleological, which is to say it does not have a purpose or end goal. And Deleuze and Guattari speak of this when talking about nomadism versus migration. In migration, the point is not the journey, but to get from one place to another, done out of necessity because one is constricted into change. Change is viewed as something negative. Whereas for the nomad, the change is an integral part of their life as a process. And thus the nomad is not defined as having this goal, but rather as having tendencies which move from one goal to the other rather happily. As alluded to earlier, the state apparatus adopts and absorbs the potentiality of the war machine and turns it into things like the military, among other institutions, whereby the war machine's force is restricted to formal channels, formal rules of battle, which the nomad is not necessarily going to follow. And in this way, we can see how the state operates in a number of other ways to form things like culture. We can think of state culture in fascism, where we have things like Aryanism being established, in which you, know, you have to be a proper Aryan or you have to be a proper German, and thus the state turns the war machine into a form of interiority instead of a form of exteriority or contact. Despite these warnings that the state apparatus can absorb the war machine, an important element of Deleuze and Guattari's philosophy is that this totalization can never be complete, and we see an ambiguous way in which the war machine is both necessary as an exterior for the state to fight against, for it to seem like it has some sort of purpose for existence, but also it's necessary to be absorbed and utilized on the interior of the state as a way for it to carry out its functions and maintain its sense of order. Thus, an essential element of the war machine, which is kept in an ambiguous relationship within the state, is secrecy and ambiguity. And this is present at all times in things like secret societies or gangs, for example, where there's a weird connection between violence and the formalization of violence, for example, in the gang, and the relationship that the state has to it. We can think of the CIA coups in Nicaragua and thus the trafficking of crack cocaine into the U.S. And we can also think of things like Freemasonry and these sort of secret societies which are both integral to the state. It's part and parcel of the state to have a certain level of secrecy. Otherwise, it would probably meet with a lot more resistance. And yet also... This secrecy is something which the state can selectively utilize to talk about 
definite modes of capture that it can use. In adopting the war machine and absorbing it, the state apparatus is necessarily going to operate by establishing zones of confluence or singularities around which things orbit in the state apparatus. This can often be God, which is used to prop up the idea of divine right of kings. This can be cultural practices. This can be particular weapons of destruction. But the point here is a tendency towards formalization. We have things like schools and prisons and mental institutions which help to formalize what is considered normal and what is considered abnormal, and by doing so creates a system of confluence and absorption whereby people tend towards a reproduction of a model, which is dangerous for basically all postmodern philosophers. We see it um, exemplified in the work of Jean Baudrillard and Michel Foucault, and of course, Deleuze and Guattari. Thus, there is a contrast here between the a-formalism of the war machine and the formalism of the state apparatus, which is to say, the war machine does not follow any particular form. In fact, it lives by interacting on these interstices of categories and changing them through creative methods. Whereas the state essentially functions by formalization and metrics. And thus, in contrast to metrics, the war machine is defined by numerics. That is to say, and there are many words that Deleuze and Guattari use for this, an operative geometry, a mobile occupancy, a directional number, or an instantaneous rate of change. They refer to this as an element of the war machine, which is a stationary process, station as process. And this reacts constantly with the territory at any one moment and makes for the emergence of velocity and rate of change as part of the war machine's function. We can think of this when looking at differentials in calculus. And Deleuze and Guattari bring this up a few times in A Thousand Plateaus, but this is often used by, for example, Manuel de Landa when he talks about uh, Deleuze and Guattari. When one first learns mathematics and geometry, we learn simple formulas to calculate the area or circumference of very simple shapes like squares, rectangles, or circles. But when we get to more complex shapes, which we don't have formulas for because they don't establish this stable and recognizable form, we have to use differentials. And what differentials do is they allow us to find any point on a curved line on a function and define its instantaneous rate of change, which sounds like a bit of a contradiction when you think about it. Instantaneous, but then also changing at any instant? This is exactly the sort of tendency of all of reality that Deleuze and Guattari want to bring out in their sort of materialist way of thinking about ontology, which is to say that numbers are always directional. They are always oriented towards some change to which they will tend towards, and thus these zones of confluence that we talked about before. There is a mobile occupancy, which, for example, defines the nomad. It is an occupant, but always as a function of a mobile process. It's like this point on a line that we mentioned before. Another example of this sort of ambiguous and almost paradoxical relationship between stability and motion is Brownian motion. This is a fundamental random wiggling process that is inherent to all particles. And if you look at particles close enough and microscopically enough via a microscope, you will see them bustling about in this random manner, which testifies to the fact that reality is defined by station as process, which is to say there is an, always an instantaneous rate of change, which is pushing objects out of any sense of form or 
being static and pushes them into a new state. And thus this is the sort of force which is essentially what the war machine is and which is warded off by the state in an effort to maintain some sort of stability. Thus Deleuze and Guattari ask us to become nomad, which is of course not a literal expression per se, so much as asking what sort of becomings or changes are the nomads centered around, and how can we center our lives and our modes of existence around these sorts of changes such that we can have the sort of contact which is often warded off by the state. We can think of the sort of alienation which is common to people in the contemporary period, whereby we can have a sort of infinite closeness to one another via media and the internet, and yet we can often feel even further apart than we used to be. As a result, Deleuze and Guattari possibly romanticize the notion of the nomad, but in order to express a desire to get back to a creative mode of being, which is not being totalized. They say, the nomads are there, on the land, wherever there forms a smooth space that gnaws and tends to grow in all directions. The nomads inhabit these places. They remain in them, and they themselves make them grow. For it has been established that the nomads make the desert no less than they are made by it. They are vectors of deterritorialization. They add desert to desert, step to step, by a series of local operations whose orientation and direction endlessly vary. I hope this has given you some insight into exactly what the war machine is and how the state fits into Deleuze and Guattari's philosophy in general. Leave any constructive or non-constructive criticism in the comments, watch some of my other lectures, and I'll see you in another video.